Hello and welcome to another allotment diary. Now, it's been a couple of weeks since I've been down here. To be fair, we've uh, had a family holiday, which was very nice. And, um, you know, despite the British weather, and the weather hasn't been brilliant over the last couple of weeks. We've had an awful lot of rain. And you can tell because um, this beetroot, uh, I'm sorry, this rhubarb was about half that size before I went away. And it's now completely nothing taken over this plot. So actually I could harvest some of this because I think there's quite a, quite a bit in there. If we have a look inside, Oh, there's a good amount of rhubarb in there, so I might well take some home. Obviously not that stick, that's uh, going on the compost pile. Now, since, I, since uh, I've been away, you can see the weeds are back. The mare's tail is going to be all dug out. Um, cooch grass and various other weeds. So the, the other weeds are quite easy, but these ones like, like this cooch grass um, and the mare's tail, which is there, they're going to have to be dug out by the roots, which isn't going to be the easiest thing to do. Now, whilst I was away as well, there was some damage done to these raised beds. Um, this, some, someone's come along the grass and actually hit them with a the car, and you can see that one's all skewed now, and along the back there, stuff's grown where it shouldn't have done. So I've got to try and realign this. Um, I've got to do some repairs because um, some of the ends have come off. Um, I think it's this, this, this one here. The, the ends have separated out, so I've got hammer, nails and screws with me, so I'm going to do some repairs on those. Um, I've sort of repaired the path where all this was messed up as well, so um, I, I'm going to have to start by obviously weeding over all this, and then I'm going to start cl clearing the paths and everything. You can see, I mean, you can see how quickly stuff grows back. Um, right there against the wood that's comfrey and that uh, has come up from a little bit of root again comfrey is another one of these perennial ones that's a real pain in the rear end um, to, to do anything with what I did do is I've started these bags of compost you can see um, you see they're full of stuff that's breaking down um, I'm going to put some more stuff in those today and basically I'm, I'm by putting them in these bags, the heat of the bag helps uh, the composting reaction, so they do break down a little bit quicker than they would in just a normal compost pile. As I've not built a proper compost heap yet, I've only got that, um, this is going to help me get some better compost that I can then use to fill these raised beds, because both of these two are slightly lower than they should be, the soil level's a bit too low. The potatoes over there, to be fair, they look like they're just about ready, so um, I think they might come up today um, if, I'm, if I'm feeling in the mood for it. Strawberries, we've got... Um, I've left the runners on. Uh, when I get around five minutes, what I need to do is I need to pot up those runners and then I'll um, have some more plants for next year's. But you can see there's um, flowers forming on them. So I might be fortunate and I might get a little bit of a second crop if I'm really, really lucky. Um, this is rosemary I planted. Um, I obviously didn't use clean soil. I mean, look at look at all these weeds growing in here. It's ridiculous. Um, I think, to be fair, I actually used some soil out of the um, off one of the plots rather than clean soil. And you can see it's um, it's a right mess this pot. So there's obviously a lot of seeds, a lot of seeds in it. Um, but you know, it's nothing too serious, is it, at the end of the day? Um, this one's looking a bit clear. I've taken some of the stuff up, but lots more to do there. Um, the the artichokes, I, I actually don't like artichokes myself, so I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with these, but I'm going to let them flower uh, and do their own thing. Um, I, I'm just not an artichoke person, so... Um, but they're looking, looking good, it's looking big. And this is all um, all beetroot, you can see. Let's see if I can get that one up without damaging too much else. Oh, these, these are planted close together, I didn't thin them fully. But you can see, oh, it's not a bad size. That's edible, isn't it? I think I might take some of these home. My, my favourite thing to do with beetroot is actually to turn it into chips. 
Um, you wash it, boil it in water for sort of about 5-10 minutes, soften it a little, and like you would with a roasting potato, then uh, um, I fry it in an air fryer and um, they're really, really tasty. If you do them with uh, Swedes and sweet potato, the Swedes need boiling for slightly longer because they're harder, then you end up with really, really nice, nice chips. So you've got the yellow of the Swede, the red of the beetroot, and then sort of the orange of the sweet potato. And it makes for actually really, really interesting, colourful dish. So um, I'll pull up a couple more of those in a minute, and uh, there'll, there'll be tea for tonight. Um, hopefully with some potatoes. So a, a gooseberry bush I found. I was weeding. I was, I was just weeding in there, and um, the, the, the weeds were quite thick. And uh, I found a tiny pot with that in, and I thought, oh right, okay. And it was full of gooseberries as well, which were actually really tasty. I had about half a dozen of them. They were really, really nice. So I've I've, um, I've potted it into a slightly bigger pot, pending. Let me just walk over here. Me clearing over here, which is going to be my soft fruit bed, which, as you can see, is going to be a, a bit of a challenge. There are some raspberry plants over here. Um, in these bushes that could go over there as well. Um, now I've been looking into apple trees as well whilst, whilst I've been away because I said I wanted to put apple trees around the outside. Now step over apples you're talking sort of 30 to 40 pounds for a plant that's been trained however I have seen cheaper plants that I can then train myself and I can train them to sort of two or three steps high so I think I'm going to do that because I can pay 10 to 12 pounds a plant I might not get some of the varieties I want, but it'll be a good starter and I can start putting some in um, along here. So, again, uh, like you can see down there where it's all been disturbed, where the beds were pushed over. So, so somebody drove into them and pushed all the beds right over this way. Um, I've sort of realigned them, but you can see that one's no longer level at all. So I've got to do some work on that. I've got to sort the path out. I think, to be fair, that one... It, I mean, it looks like it's in line with that, but I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to shift, sort of shift that around, and I've got to repair some of the corner posts. I've got to make new corner posts because obviously they've um, they've snapped where they were hit with a car, and they're no longer in the ground properly. So I'm going to have to get on with that. But I'm going to do a bit of work today, and um, once I've done the weeding, as I said, you know, it's going to take me five minutes to just weed these over. And you may think, oh, why, why are you bothering weeding? There's not much there. But if I just take the five minutes now, get these perennial ones out, I'm discouraging them from growing any further. They're easy to tackle, and the bed will be clearer. You know, the beds are clear. Um, I do need to cover these ones. That is a project for another day. But I just quite simply haven't had the time to do it yet. Um, plus, I need to find my staple gun. I can't remember where I put it. But once I've cleared all these we'll then start doing the paths between those two beds and maybe that bed as well and I'll get you involved in that and bring you in on it. So I'm off for doing some weeding and I will talk to you in a minute. Now these three beds are, are clear. It would have been a lot quicker doing them with a the hoe um, but because a lot of the weeds are the perennial weeds like this cooch grass you can see on this one um, what I did instead is I, I dug them out. Those at the top I've just sort of knocked the heads off and left them there to rot down and they'll be fine. Now you will remember a while ago I built this bed and it was a mixture of compost and um, oh, there's another one. It was a mixture of compost and um, quite a lot of manure. Now you can see looking at it it's breaking down quite nicely. Um, what I've been doing is every sort of Every couple of weeks, I've been just turning it, scooping it around. You see, you can see there, I've done it here, I haven't. But I've just been making sure, because horse manure has a tendency, like, like you see there, to, to clump. So by breaking it up every now and then, you, you just stop it from clumping, which helps it break down. And just give it a quick turn, and you can see it, it's coming along quite nicely. The soil is looking good. Um, I've had to dig around and there's plenty of worms in here which obviously means that they're busy breaking everything down for me so that's ideal. So um, having manured the bed I mean I could have just left it but I think by um, by giving the, the, 
the turn and just helping mix things up. It just helps break things up a little bit better because obviously, you know, you, you're aerating the soil, which helps the whole composting uh, process. Because so the problem with, 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 with manure, you, you can just see, if I bring, bring this up, you can see it gets claggy and sticky where it gets wet, which stops it from breaking down. Which is why you need to, I think, to move it around a bit and break it up because that really helps it to, helps it a lot to, to, to break down quicker and turn into decent soil. So that's looking really good. I'm very pleased with that. Give that a couple of months um, and by the time I plant in that, this one's going to be sort of a springtime planting, I imagine. It's going to be superb quality soil. I might even sort of in a couple of weeks give it another top dressing with a couple of months, sorry, sort of November time. Give another top dressing with some more compost or manure just to really sort of firm it up. Now what I'm doing next is um, along here we have very thick grass. You can, you can see the grass there where I've not touched it. Well, I've not picked it up anyway. Um, but the problem I had with the grass was it was very deeply rooted and the soil was quite shallow here. So when I was pulling up the grass, I was getting up big clumps of soil as well, and it was making a real, real mess. Now, I used um, a weed killer down here. I don't like using weed killers. I, I prefer organic gardening, but I, I couldn't clear this properly without causing an awful lot of damage, potentially to the road, and you can see the road edge about here, um, and obviously to the soil, because under this bit, it's just really hardcore. So you've got maybe an inch or two inches at most of soil, and then you've got solid rocks. I mean, you can see all them, that's come out of that, that side over there. So, um, rather than dig it up and wreck the soil and, and everything else, what I chose to do instead was I put some weed killer down the side here very, very carefully. I did check before I used it, made sure it was one that was safe for use in uh, vegetable beds and one that would break down fairly rapidly uh, on contact with the soil, which it, it did. Um, now obviously I'm not going to plant anything along these edges just yet, and sometime in the future I will put down um, apple trees, but for now I'm not going to plant anything down there. So what I want to do is I just want to tidy it up a bit, let's just scrape this, um, I just want to tidy it up a bit so that I've got a decent edging, um, and I'll, I'll, do the same, I'll do the same down here, I've got to dispose of all these stones first. So I'll get rid of those later and I'll do the same down there. And then I'll do the same all the way along the edge here. And the idea behind it is it, it's just going to make everything look a bit tidier. Because um, when, when you've, you've got all the mess down the side here, it just makes your allotment look, for, for me, and you know, obviously I, I do have a, a degree of OCD, it does make the thing look untidy to me, and I don't like that. So um, my, my idea is, is if I discourage weeds as much as possible, then obviously I'm they're not going to spread. So if I leave this to go to weed, then I'm going to have to tackle seeds and I'm to try and keep it trimmed. And, you know, I know people on the allotments have little hand, hand push lawnmowers and they have grassy areas and they, they, they mow them. But for me, that's, that's, that's not for me. I want to have as little work as possible. The idea for me with the allotment is I want it low maintenance. That's, that's the beauty of these raised beds, the paths that I'm going to have between them and everything else. I want it low maintenance. I don't want to be spending hours and hours digging. I don't want to spend hours weeding. You know, unfortunately, due, due to personal circumstances, my time down here is limited, and that's just the way it is. I can't spend days down here. You know, If I had to come down here and, and dig an entire allotment that looked like that over, it wouldn't get done. I quite simply can't do it, I haven't got the time. But like this, it will become very low maintenance, which basically means when I come down here, I can concentrate on the beds, on planting, and on harvesting. And with the raised beds, obviously they're no dig, uh, you can see light fluffy soil. The plan will be, to come, once they're planted, they're going to be planted densely, which will crowd out weeds. I will, um, I will hoe them regularly, which will keep the weeds down. And hoeing all of these beds, there's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 beds so far. Hoeing all these beds will take me no more than about 15, 20 minutes at the most if I have a break in the middle. You know, it's not difficult. Um, it's really, really quick work. And if I do that maybe three times a week, 
I'm not going to have any problems with weeds at all on in these beds. Then it's just a case of keeping the paths clear, which, to be fair, is actually quite difficult at the moment because there's a lot of mare's tail and cooch grass and dandelion coming up with, um, um, around the edge of the beds. And I will tackle those as and when I can because along, along the back of there, th those beds at the back, that's meant to be a path, but you can see it's, it's just all overgrown. There's meant to be a path running along the shed and all the way down. So I need to clear that and again it will be done like this, it will be done properly. I've got loads and loads of weed mater uh, material, um, I picked all that up cheap in the autumn sales because obviously the shops are clearing everything out so I've got lots and lots of that. So that's going to go all along here, it's going to go along all the paths and um, there will be other paths, another path going along here before the next set of raised beds over here which I, I will build later in the year and obviously I'll talk you through the whole process. Um, much of it I've, I've already written about it's in the, uh, my raised bed gardening book which is currently on Amazon. It's uh, available as a Kindle book or as a, a physical imprint book depending on your preference. But I'm, I'm going to put raised beds all over there and I'm going to build a lot of quite exciting things. But what, I'm, uh, what I need to do is I need to keep it low maintenance because I don't want to be spending my time, wasting my time weeding and everything else. Now, oh, one thing I do want to show you, obviously we've had quite a lot of wet weather. And one advantage of the wet weather is obviously the soil becomes a lot looser. And that enables you to pull up things like this beauty, it's the uh, dandelion, you can see well, it's a good foot maybe, the, the root. I pulled it out by hand and it's come out completely whole. And I've, I've dug up quite, I've pulled up quite a few of those. So it's a great time of year for me to go around and pull up all the dandelions and get them out by the root. Now I've gone through, and you, you, do you remember from the early videos what it was like over here? I've gone through and I've deadheaded them all. So they have, hopefully I've, I've stopped them spending as many seeds. But like I said, once I've built the raised beds and I've got these paths in place, it's not going to be a problem because it's going to be very, very low maintenance and that's very, very important for me and I, I think for a lot of people, we, we, you know, if we can keep our allotments low maintenance, it means we've got more time to do the things that we think are important. So that means we've got more time to really, you know, enjoy our allotments. The last thing you want to do is come here and go, oh God, not again, I've got to do all this weeding, I've got to do all this digging, I've got to do this. I've got to do that because frankly that, that's distressing and that's when you end up giving up. You know, I know a lot of people that have, um, particularly over the last two or three years where the weather's been really quite variable, who basically said, I give up, I, I can't keep up with the weeds. But if you create everything so it's low maintenance in the first place, you don't have to worry about it because you, you are making sure that you don't have to work so hard to keep up with the weeds. Now, I've been away for here for a sort of week and a half, two weeks really now. And you can see the raised beds, there wasn't very much in them. The ones that are covered, no work at all. These three, it took me maybe um, 15 minutes to do that, but that's because I got sidetracked and I pulled up a load of the comfrey and down the lines that were in those beds and stuffed them in those bags to make some more compost. Yeah, that, that's, that's going to be quite good because it's full of comfrey, nettle, uh, dock, stuff like that, that's you know, really good, full of uh, nutrition. So it, it, if you set it up right, it's not going to be um, a lot of work. The problem comes is when you've got lots and lots of bare soil and that's when you get all the weeds and it becomes a nightmare. I, I remember my own old lot when I didn't have raised beds and again, I'd be away for two weeks, go on the holiday, whatever, I come back, it'd be under weeds and it'll be a real nightmare to dig because you've got solid claggy soil that's really difficult to dig and it's hard work and it puts you off but as I said 10 minutes has done that they're clear um, I'm going to put this down this will take me half an hour at the most and that includes wheelbarrowing the um, stuff from over there you can see there's a load of uh, bark chipping then I want to clear along there now just so you know when I, when I clear along these parts here what I'm doing is I'm actually digging them, digging them out. I'm digging these paths properly. I'm pulling all the weeds out as I dig, simply because it's going to make sure that the weeds don't come back. I don't want weeds growing around the side of my path and everything else. Because once I got the paths down, it's actually going to be quite difficult for me to weed them, uh, you know, without damaging the paths and causing problems. So I've got about two inches of bark under here, under my feet. So. 
you know, there's a, there's a fair bit there, um, and it should suppress the weeds quite nicely. But by digging out all the weeds under there, they're not going to spread and root up in my in my beds and cause me other problems. So I'm sort of, I know it's extra work. I know I'm making myself extra work. But in the long term, I'm reducing the amount of work I'm doing. I would rather do it properly now, take my time and spend the extra sort of half hour digging that area there, and you know, 45 minutes digging that before I put the stuff down, the the fabric down, and the um, chipping, so that it's properly done and I'm not going to get those weeds coming back later in the year or next year and have to spend ages and ages clearing them when they're harder work. Um, this way, it's very easy to do, it's very clear. And you can see, there's, there's, even though I, I dug down well here uh, and I cleared all this, you can still see there's a dandelion coming through. That, though, is from where everything was damaged uh, when someone hit it. So I will, I will sort that out and get rid of that dandelion. But you can see... The idea is, is to make it low maintenance and make it easier for me to garden and spend time doing the stuff I enjoy rather than having to weed and everything else. So I'm going to get on and sort this path out. won't take very long at all. I'll, I'll perhaps do a few updates as I go along and sort of share with you progress and show you what I'm doing and how it's working so you can see how I build the paths and how I stop them from... Um, uh, uh, how, how I keep it under control and, and keep it looking good. So I'm going to get on with that now and I will update you in a few minutes and show you how it's progressing. Right, so I've put uh, the weed fabric down here. It goes more or less to the edge of the pavement. What I've done is I've doubled it over so it's, um, so it's a bit thicker than it would normally just to really sort of keep the weeds down. It's gone under the raised bed and up a little on the other side. Um, and that will hopefully just help stop weeds come through and um, keep them under control. You see there's a few bits sticking out um, over here, but I think to be fair, this is the edge of the, edge of the road and it's going to be a difficult one for me to deal with and keep clear anyway. So um, I may, may find that you know, two or three times a year I actually spray along there just to keep the weeds down um, and keep it all tidy. But that's that bit done, so now it's off to get some chippings, bark chippings, and put that on there, and then that will look nice and tidy. And there we are, I've just put down the bark chipping. You can see that I've tried to keep it around the same level as the bottom of the raised bed. Um, I don't want to build it too high above the raised bed because obviously it's, it's going to get wet and where it could touch the wood, it could cause the wood to, to rot. Um, it's good, good bark chipping. It comes from local council, I believe. It uh, doesn't cost us anything. It's, uh, as far as the council's concerned, it's waste. So they're more than happy to bring it here and dump it. It means they don't have to get rid of it elsewhere. It is very... Um, there's a lot of pine in it, so it's not really good to put on... It's not good to use as a mulch on your soil because it'll acidify the soil. But it is very, very good just to use as your path and you can see it's uh, easy to move around so let's just straighten it up a little what's that some weed of some sort but, uh, um, but yeah so that's, that's not bad that's not bad that's that didn't take long at all today so I'm gonna tackle over there in a minute but, um, it's actually just starting raining so I'm not sure how much I'll get done what I have done as well just to, to let you know is I've given this compost pile a bit of a turn. I came past it and noticed stuff's growing in it, which means it's sort of not composting properly. So I've gone in, dug the fork, twisted it around a bit, turned parts of it, and you can see it's not, it's still breaking down. You can see there's still bits in there, it's still breaking down. There's a, a slug there helping the process. There's a, a dandelion there that uh, w was growing in there. So I've given it a turn, it's breaking down and uh, it should hopefully speed up the process now it's been turned a little because unfortunately the bacteria that um, uh, causes the compost the process to happen needs oxygen and when compost heaps like this get wet they sink together the gaps disappear the oxygen goes and it basically means that the plants the, the bacteria ends up dying because it can't breathe therefore the composting process stops so by, by turning it like that, jabbing your fork, twisting it around a bit, you're opening it up, 
letting the air in, which will help it to um, uh, to compost faster. If you really want your compost to break down quickly, you, you want two bins. Turn it regularly, you know, once a week between the bins. Within about a couple of months, it'll be gone. It'll be really, really nice soil. Um, but that's because you're turning it down. And you've, and, you know, you've got to feed it right and everything else. But if you don't do that, it's going to take longer. If you don't turn it, you just leave it in the pile. It can take a year, two years to, to break down. But you can know how, see how much this this is broken down. Because if I go down a bit, you can see the height of it off the ground there. Um, it was double that before I went away on holiday, where I weeded everything. So it's really broken down. You can see how it compacts and forces out the oxygen and therefore kills the beneficial bacteria. Right, well, I'm uh, off to do these paths now, though, uh, unfortunately, if we look up there, you can see uh, some nice clouds coming over. It is starting to rain, so I'm not sure how much more I'm actually going to be able to get done today. Uh, rain may well call off play, but I'm going to push on and try and get a bit more done anyway, and uh, I will keep you updated, and hopefully I will see you very soon. Remember, leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and uh, I will talk to you very soon. Take care. This bed here used to have the potatoes in. Now I mentioned uh, right at the beginning that I thought I might dig them up today and uh, as it's not raining that bad yet, I thought, oh, go on, let's dig them up and have a look. And there's the crop. I'm not sure what variety they are, to be honest. I'm, I'm not an expert on types of potato. Um, but they look nice enough. There's not many, um, but then I didn't think there would be. There a lot of the plants when I looked at them very small. Now, what I have found on this on this plot is a lot of potato plants basically scattered all over the place. I found when I've been digging out these beds here, I found potatoes in there, obviously from previous crops. Now, looking at this bed here, it has like four potato plants in it, which didn't look to me like it was deliberately planted. If you're planting potato plants, you plant more than four in a bed of this size. Now, on investigation. That's the crop that's come out to it, which isn't bad. Um, yeah, you know, that's certainly it's a, a good meal for tonight. But um, this is the problem I find with planting potatoes in the ground. You plant them in the ground and you always miss one. There's always one left over and, you know, you always find potato plants cropping up where you don't want them. Um, and this is why I've, I've made the decision um, since I've been on this plot that I'm going to grow in potatoes in bags next year because I can then have control of them and I know that when I harvest them I'm not going to find that I've left ones in the soil and next year when you know for example I might plant run the beans here next year and I'll find potatoes popping up in between them where I've left even a tiny tiny little one in the soil so yeah, whilst, whilst uh, yeah, these raised beds here, this one and this one, I've re really dug deep into. So there's plenty of soil underneath there for me to grow potatoes. It really goes down deep and it's good all the way down. The problem is, is I'm going to end up with potatoes everywhere. So I'm going to grow them in bags next year. I bought a load of potato bags. Again, I've picked them up in the sale for you know a quarter of the price I'd normally pay for them. So I've got plenty of them, and I'm going to use those as of next year. And uh, that should make my life an awful lot easier um, for growing potatoes because obviously all I need to do is empty them out and um, it, everything's in the bag and then the compost is in the bag and either go in the raised beds to fortify them or go in the compost heap and break down and be used sort of the following year so there's, there's plenty of opportunities for it and it's really quick and, and easy and neat way to use it and I can you know, for example, I could put the bags in one of these paths, between these paths here, where they're out of the way, and, you know, I've got plenty of space, so I can really maximise my, my use of space. And I think that's a, that would be a really good idea, and it's going to help me as well. I've also picked a few more beetroots. Not the world's biggest beetroot, um, but then they are very closely spaced. So what I've done is I've pulled out some of these, and um, hopefully the other ones will grow um, in, into the gaps in between really so that's what I'm hoping but I'm, I'm pleased unfortunately I, I think um, I'm, I'm going to be stopping in a minute because the rain's getting heavier the clouds are just coming over and uh, I th don't think it's going to go away the weather forecast isn't 
particularly brilliant, which is a shame. I'd wanted to do more than I have done today. Um, but I don't particularly want to get unwell. I don't, you know, I don't want to get cold or you know, get wet and then get ill because I can't bring illnesses home because of our little lad. I can't, make, uh, can't afford for him to get ill. So I'm, I'm going to have to pack up now and um, uh, head home. But the soil here, by the way, I meant to say, the soil here is, is really good. This was the one, if you remember, there was lots of horse manure on the top and it was all solid and claggy where when I first got it. I broke it up a bit. I've just dug down sort of a fork, fork and a half step in here and uh, really mixed the soil up and um, broken up a lot of the clumps and it's looking good. Could do with a rake, um, but again, I'll probably do that when it's not raining and uh, um, it'll be easier for me then, but it's all, all looking good. Oh, one thing I meant to say, right, you can see the size of that raised bed and you can see the size of this is sort of a, almost twice, twice the size. You know, you can see there, look, you can see that one? and then that one's about twice the size. These, this, like this, brilliant, brilliant size for working on because you can reach the whole thing from the outside without any need for acrobatics. So you can easily reach it and you can really practice no dig. This size though, reaching the middle is, um, or shall we say it's interesting. Um, it's very hard to get to the middle without stepping on the saw, which obviously compacts it and then uh, undoes the whole no dig thing. So, if you're going to build raised beds, I would not recommend them being that big. Um, I, w I would actually recommend that, which I think is uh, six six foot by four. I think looking at it, um, whereas I think those are six by eight or so, or six by ten or something. But that size is a good size. You can maybe extend it a little bit further, but that's a really really good size because you can comfortably reach the whole bed with no trouble at all. So that's just a little tip if you're building raised beds from me to you. But I'm going to go and start uh, packing up and get out of the rain so I don't get uh, cold and uh, I will speak to you very soon.